Hello, this is Paul Shearer with InformCIO.com. Today we're going to be taking a look at the topic of data encryption. This is perhaps one of the most vital and pertinent topics to CIOs today. The idea of keeping your data secure. If people get access to data that they're not authorized to, specifically personally identifiable data, you're putting your business at risk for lawsuits. So we're going to start out taking a look at what's available on the open source side, aka what's available free to you without having to expend any of those limited IT dollars that aren't in your budget. Uh, the first product we're going to take a look at is TrueCrypt. This is an open source on the fly encryption software. Uh, their website is www.truecrypt.org and we're going to go ahead and download the software. Go ahead and pull the software down. Pretty quick download. Not something that you always get with these uh, open source products. Go ahead and install it onto the machine. And our installation is now completed. No, we're not going to look at the tutorial. Finished, and we're going to close the website and now go and launch the program as soon as we find it. Ah, there it is. All right, starting up TrueCrypt. The first thing that we're going to need to do is to create a volume. We hit the Create Volume button. We're going to create this within a file container. So basically what it's going to do is it's going to create a virtual disk, but it's going to be a file. This would be similar to the concept of how VMware, uh, VMware server, its hard drive, is simply a file on the host server. Uh, we'll select create a file container. Next. We're going to create a standard TrueCrypt volume. And now it's going to ask us to select a file. We're going to choose the location of the file. Let's put this under, actually we'll choose Browse Folders, Documents and Settings, since Windows 2008 no longer lets us save stuff to our C drive. And we'll call it My New Volume. Say Save. and next. Now it's going to ask us what type of encryption algorithm that we want to go with and we're going to choose Serpent 2 Fish AES. Why am I choosing this? Well it's 256 bit encryption and it just really sounds cool. Obviously you'll want to do some research into what encryption algorithm makes most sense for you but typically most of them are fairly secure. and we'll say next. Now it's asking us how big this wants to be. This is going to depend on what our use for this is. Are, are we going to create a virtual hard drive on this machine that's encrypted and that we're going to use to install all of our documents to? And if so, it's going to be need to be a rather large volume. Or are we simply planning on creating a small uh, couple meg volume that we can use to copy a couple files to in an encrypted manner and then email to someone else or even put on a public FTP server and make available for someone to download. In this case we're going to go with a latter option so we're going to only make this 100 meg in size. Now we're going to choose the password. We will pick something extremely secure this is my new password. This is my new 
password. And actually, one of the features I really like is display password. So I can actually make sure that these match. Uh, typically, you're going to want to go with something a little bit more secure than simply one word that's found in the dictionary. Uh, a, a phrase is highly recommended, and even more so recommended than that, would be to add some random characters. Oh, shoot, there we go. At the end, making it uh, making it much more difficult to get via brute force. We're going to go ahead and since it's only 100 meg, format it as fat. It is formatting. I also like the fact that it tells us the speed that we're getting. Uh, this is really important if you're actually considering using this as a virtual hard drive so that all of the files on your workstation or your laptop are encrypted. Because obviously the slower it is, the slower your response time is going to be. I'm going to go ahead and say OK here. Next. And we're just going to cancel because this would be starting us all over. All right, now that we have created our volume, we are going to mount it. So we'll hit Select File. I believe we decided to put this in Documents and Settings. And there we go, my new volume. Now note, no file extension because we didn't put one here. We could actually call this anything. I could call this mynewvolume.txt. And they'd have a heck of a time trying to open this up in Notepad. Go ahead and say there, and now we're going to pick the drive letter we want to mount it as. We'll pick the E drive and say mount. It now prompts us for our password. So I'm going to type in this is my new password. Say OK. And now if I go to Windows Explorer, I see that I now have an E drive which contains no data. And we're going to copy our top secret VPN client into this folder by simply drag and dropping it. Typical standard Windows interface experience. Anyone should be able to do it. Okay, we see that it now contains it. We're going to go back to TrueCrypt. We're going to say dismount all. Exit. And now if we go back to Documents and Settings, wherever that is, we basically have this 100 meg file setting out here which it contains data in an encrypted format. All you have to do is make this file available to uh, who, whatever the user is that you're wanting to send this information to. Have them install TrueCrypt on their machine and give them access to the password and they'll be able to unencrypt this and extract the data. So once more, going back to TrueCrypt, right mouse click, we're going to say Mount, uh, no, we didn't want to say that. There we go. We're going to select our file, new volume, open, mount. Now let's go ahead and type in a invalid password. Incorrect password. Type in a valid password. This is my new password. And once again, you can see down here with this new volume just mysteriously appeared. And it contains our VPN client. This has been Paul Shearer with InformCIO.com, hoping that you have a great day. And more than that, hoping that you visit my sponsor links.